This week on Erotic Awakening, Sub Frenzy, Safe Calls, Kickstarter Cards, and Unusual Kinks. Welcome to Erotic Awakening, an exploration of all things erotic. If you are offended by adult topics or prohibited by law, we recommend you stop listening right now. Right now. We want to thank our latest patron supporters, Wild Kitten, Haley, and Leah. Head over to patreon.com slash erotic awakening today and get your bonus content and support the show. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Dan. Today on the podcast, we are going to be talking about a tried and true topic, right? Never talk about safety too much, especially in the lifestyle that we have. Mm Mm-hmm. And maybe things have changed in the years since we've covered this last. We've become of this big digital AI age. So maybe there's new AI ways to do safe checks. Safety oh, if search. there's new AI ways to do it, I wouldn't know about it. But let's see what we can come up with. Fair. First, I want to explain why I came up with this topic, though. Okay. So for some reason, I keep thinking people get smarter over the years. And that doesn't... I'm not seeing any proof of that okay. is what I'm saying. Okay. So I was on Reddit and I was on a subreddit and on this subreddit, I try to post resources, but for some reason, resources are not allowed on this subreddit, even though a lot of people on it seem to be new to BDSM. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that was kind of frustrating, but neither here nor there, I guess. But the reason I wanted to post some resources is because I'm seeing time and time again, People doing very unsafe things and meeting strangers and then surprised when things go wrong. Mm-hmm. And you had a specific example I had a of specific this. post. So there was a specific post of someone going, oh, my God, I have this fantastic dom. He's so great. We have such a great relationship. But I'm starting to get some red flags where I think he's married. We only meet like for a couple of hours every week in a hotel And I was wanting to meet him at his house, and he said no, and and I realized I didn't even know his name, let alone his address, Mm -hmm. and and things like this. And, And I stopped at that, and I'm like, oh, you have a great relationship with your dominant, but you don't know his name, and you're meeting him in a hotel. What the fuck? Well. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) You didn't get to respond to that because you wanted to share some resources. I didn't get to respond to that because I wanted to share some resources, which the owner of the subreddit didn't like. And therefore, I didn't get a chance Mm -hmm. to uh, do that before I was bumped off the group. But But I've had friends do this in the past as well. It's not something that is new. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people find this lifestyle, especially submissives, they're they're so tingly and and they're so, they want to grab the gusto and jump right in. And I think they forget about their safety and that even though in this lifestyle, we talk about consent and we talk about talking and we have these conversations and, you know, we get to know ourselves and our authentic selves and things like that. There's still some dangerous people out sure, there. Absolutely. There are absolutely people that use this as a lifestyle. There's people, there's narcissists out there that use this, that use the term of dominant to express why they're being a narcissist. There's all kinds of interesting people. Had I seen your original sub post that or a uh, reddit post that led you to this conversation i would have simply replied by saying you are a fuck toy if that works for you great but don't pretend it's something that it's not right but they might they might be so new they don't even know that language sure they've probably met someone they probably found this lifestyle they they met someone online that person said if you're a two submissive then you don't need to know my name. You will just let me dominate you and you'll do what you're told or you're not a true submissive. And this person believed it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, <laughs> what you, on, that's the thing that face, you run right? into, right? So I want to start off with this, this caveat. Okay. In that we have to be careful of the idea that there are truisms at all. Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring this up is often we hear... If this, then that's a red flag, end of conversation. And that's not always the case. So an example of that, if a, well, let me ask you the question then. If a submissive or a a follower, whatever label, Mm -hmm. says to you, yes, I have a relationship with a dominant or master, whatever label they use, right? I am a follower. I have a relationship with a leader. 
and my leader and I do not have safe words, period. To you, is that an automatic red flag? No. What situation is it a red flag? When they don't know their name. Okay. <laughs> that was my big thing. We have this great relationship, but I don't know his real name, right? So I have had submissives or or slaves or followers. We've had conversations. I've I've been doing round tables and sub circles with people of that label for 20 some years now. Mm-hmm. And yes, every once in a while, there is one that says we absolutely do not have safe words. And my first reaction is cringe, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm like, oh, shit, how do they how does the dominant know what their what their physical limits are? How do they learn their physical limits without safe words? And yes, if you're a 24 seven master slave People will tell you that safe words are not allowed, and but they're tools. And so, but I don't know that I get that as a red flag because some people truly believe they don't have safe words. See, here, here's where I find the red flagginess. Okay. Is. There's a big difference between we don't have safe words and safe words are not allowed. For oh, me, oh, I see what you're saying. When somebody says safe words are not allowed, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. But I'm in a situation right now with somebody. I've got 20 plus years of experience. They've got 10 years plus of experience. And the dynamic we have, we don't have safe words. We have good communication. Mm-hmm. We have my ability to listen. We have the understanding that I'm not an ego driven human for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have post scene or even post decision conversation abilities. And we both have a goal of where we're going with this. And this is obviously, a, this is talking about Minkari, by the way, not a new person in my life that you don't know about. Okay. No, I assumed it was Minkari. Good. So my question is, if something happens and they go into a deep, dark space, they're not allowed to stop the scene? No, they're not allowed to stop the scene. Huh. What the, the understanding is that their confidence in me is that I will see that, I will see something is fucked up, and I will make adjustments to unfuck it. And that I'm not going to allow my own desires, lust, ego to leave them in a deep, dark space. And if I overlook all of the signs, Mm -hmm. after the words, I pick I pick up the pieces and fix it. Okay. Yep. No different For, than you and I, by I the way. I will say, but me and you, I've actually got an extra safe word. Huh? But, and this is true. It, it, yes, we often have these conversations in front of a live audience. <laughs> you and I started 20 years ago as fresh in the babes oh, in the wood. That is right? true. Babes in the woods with no role model. Well, some role models, but not, not, what in, we not in what we were building. And over those 20 years, I mean, in the beginning, yeah, we said, you know, we're going to go red, yellow, green, because we need a way to understand, because I don't know, as a new dominant, just the, the BDSM aspect alone, not even including the power exchange part. Mm-hmm. But then you add to that, we have this extra safe word, because we had this whole aspect of our lives that was new to each other, where we're like, I, I you know, we don't know what's going to cause, and for our, an ab reaction would be the hypnotic term, but a, a negative an emotional trigger that drives us in the wrong direction for either one of us. Right. And and we kind of like steer away from even using the word trigger anymore because people use that to mean uncomfortable. Yeah. Whereas for us, it's a total emotional meltdown reaction or yep. lock up or dark spiral or whatever. But, and, um, and then you end up in hypno kink land where a trigger is just a, when I do this, you right. do that. <laughs> oh, that would have been neat if I'd have just gone. <laughs> <laughs> So, but true. And I was also starting my healing path, which means the walls that I had built around my trauma were also crumbling at that point. So some things that we were doing were leaking into that. Yes. And so we needed the extra safe word, which was abort, because that meant that we had hit one of my landmines and we needed to stop and pick up the pieces. Right. So. So it scrolls all the way back to there is the. Yes, you should always have safe words, except, and then you fill in the circumstances, Mm -hmm. right? Now, if you are at a situation where you don't know the person, 
You don't know where they live. You don't know their actual name. You can't just pick up the phone and call them. And if you do that, they're like, oh, fuck, why are you calling me? Mm -hmm. If you don't know where they work, you're not to the point of being able to surrender pet, uh, safe words. If they tell you, I don't allow my submissives to have safe words, then you should fucking not be part of that situation. Right. Unless, at least certainly not until you vetted the fuck out of them. Right. Say, oh, OK, well, that's pretty interesting. Who is your last submissive? What's their contact information? I want to talk to them. And mm -hmm. when bad things happen, how do you handle it? Right. Because bad things will happen if you've seen with somebody enough or you're in a long term, any kind of relationship. Right. We know things are messy. <laughs> Exactly. So, and then the whole idea that she didn't know his name. And obviously with some people we play with, I don't know their real Absolutely. names, right? If I go to an event and play with someone, I I don't always know their real names. 80% of the time, I don't know their real names. But to say that I'm in a relationship with someone and meeting them in a hotel, that's kind of, that meeting them in a hotel, they should have met in public first. I mean, oh, sure. the, one of the one of the big things we were taught at the very beginning was safe calls. And I can remember a dominant saying uh, this is when there was pay phones. Right. And I can remember a dominant saying, oh, my God, if I went to play with someone that because there weren't as many events, I would give them the quarter, show them my driver's license, tell them to send my driver's license information to a friend of theirs so that they would know what's going on and then remind them that they're supposed to have a, fo a safe call. And then during the dinner or whatever it was in public, remind them they're supposed to make their safe call and yeah. give them the quarter yeah. because they wanted all the safe. Classy. Right. Yeah. They wanted all the safe calls. They didn't want the person to have a safe call, not make the call. And then the cops are called. Right. So and if you have a safe call set up, make sure if you do not call in, and now we have text, sure, right? So now we have text and things like that, that that person is willing to have a safety check done. Yeah. Now, I, for me, I have the simplified gate guide to safe calls since we don't do pay phones anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to have this whole code system that we would share where after a certain amount of time, if you called me and I replied by saying, oh, the cat's out of food, that meant something was uncomfortable. Right. But if I replied by saying, oh, Johnny lost a tooth, then that blah, 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 blah. Here's the simplified version of safe calls, kids, for me today. After about 15 minutes, you have your person. You know what? We better back up a little bit. I'm going to talk about that. What the fuck is a safe call? Have we actually defined what a safe call is? No, I, I thought it was kind of obvious from what it's called, a safe call. But go ahead if you have a description. Yeah, very simple. I am getting ready to go out on a date with a new person, whether it's a BDSM scene preparation or just a plain old date. I say, Dawn, give me a call. I expect to meet the person at 7, so call me at 7.15. Mm -hmm. And then when Dawn calls at 7.15, this is your safe call. You pick up the call, and here's how I, I would do it. There's no secret code of cat food or anything. <laughs> if When Dawn calls, I answer the phone. If I'm not comfortable, mm -hmm. I, I tell the person I'm with, I'm sorry, I have to leave. I leave the phone on, mm -hmm. right? I'm not hanging up. Right. And when they say, oh, gosh, is something wrong? Simply say, I'll, I'll tell you about it later, but I have to go right now. And my phone is still on. Mm -hmm. And now we are paying attention to how that person responds. If that person responds by anything other than, well, I'm sorry, I hope I get to see you again, blah, blah, blah. All, you know, then you're then then we have a little bit of an issue, mm -hmm. and you simply keep repeating, "I have to go right now," and my phone is you know you're you're clearly leaving the phone on, right, so that person can hear right right now, because you are doing this in a public place, not a hotel and not a park. If you need to lift your voice up because that person's not comfortable with you leaving, you lift your voice up. Exactly. Good. And you're, you're out. And don't let a new person walk you to your car. Especially, oh, tell people why that. Why so, that? So, well, literally, do I have a story about that one? I might, but I will tell you, just as, as a follower, as a female follower, mm -hmm. I will not let a new person walk me to my car because that puts me in a very vulnerable place. Right. Right. 
So I will say, nope, that's okay. I parked close. I've got my keys. You know, I can walk myself to my car. I will not let a new person yeah. walk me to my car. It's just, it's very dangerous. Most females know this and won't do it. But I also thought most females knew not to go to a hotel with a stranger. Yeah. But man, then again, it's also a fetish, right? But man, safety, safety, safety. Yeah, again, all of this is optional. You, yeah, you, you absolutely. Do, you do. The other interesting aspect of it that people forget about is, by the way, if you are a leader type, or just a male-bodied person, you're allowed to get your safe call too. Absolutely. At the 20-minute mark, I'm going to have somebody call me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I might answer the phone and simply say, hey, I'm good. Talk to you later. Or I'm busy. I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. Right? That's, but make sure you answer. Right? You can't just say, oh, everything's fine, so I'm not going to answer. <laughs> right? Right. Because that might imply to somebody, gee, they can't answer. They can't answer. And it's really cool now. We, I don't think we've had this discussion in a very long time mm -hmm. because you do have texting. You can go to the bathroom and text yes. and things like that. There are some restaurants that will have a sign. I don't know about the men's bathroom, but mm -hmm. the women's bathroom. Some places will have a sign on the back of the door that says, if you are in trouble, order this drink which isn't on the menu to the waitress and the waitress knows to help get you out of that situation or, or something like that it's worded a little different but did, do you remember that we had we had lunch with some podcast listeners a couple of weekends ago wonderful and people. they were they were they were younger than us yep. so when they brought up this book it kind of surprised me because we used to give out this book and so did Bear oh, and Shiva. Yeah. so um one of the things about not not letting a new person walk you to your car is actually covered in a book called The Gift of Fear. Mm -hmm. And even though we, you and me, don't like to live by fear, it's good to know what to look out for yeah. as well, especially in these situations. And, you know, I used to be so scared for a friend of ours that she would get into such sub frenzy and want to play that she would look for people on Craigslist and not know them and just hook up in a hotel just to get her needs met. Yeah. And that is just so scary. I mean, you hear the stories on the news, or at least we used to. There were some literal stories on the news, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago or 12 years ago or whatever it was. And things did not end well for those that uh, showed up at the hotel. Yes, we have a safe-ish community. There's a lot of leaders and a lot of people that work very hard to keep this community safe mm -hmm. and to teach consent and all these things. Like any big group, there are going to pe be people that sneak in and take advantage of people. Sure, absolutely. And we've, unfortunately, we've seen that. We've seen, right. um, I can remember a event many years ago where someone gave their ticket to the event to someone else because they couldn't attend. And you're like, oh, well, that seems reasonable. Well, it's not. An event that you and I are going to in January, they literally run background checks of everyone going. Right. If you hand your ticket off to someone else, they don't know who the hell you are. All That's of a why a lot of events have that rule that you cannot yes. give give the ticket away. The ticket purchaser has to be the person with the ID. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're very serious about that for that reason. So, um, yeah, I've had to revoke somebody's ticket that mm -hmm. was doing that at one yeah. of our events. And we didn't even have a dungeon. But uh, One thing about this is don't let all this stop you from oh, living, no. right? No. You know, we're we're sharing the worst of stories because just for for knowledge, but it's not I can't name shoot, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can name a handful of times where someone that I know ended up in a in a situation that they couldn't get out of with a safe call. Right. Or a where a safe call even led them to, you know, where you get that feeling of, ooh, this person is not somebody I want to be around. Mm -hmm. But it happens, and it's better to be better forearmed than forlorn. Forewarned, forewarned, forearmed, forewarned than, yes. Forlorn. <laughs> that's, I'm going to go with forlorn. That's, if that's not a real saying, I'm, I'm claiming it as mine now. <laughs> I don't know if it is or not. So, yeah, so that's a little bit about sub frenzy. Like I said, and I, I'm sure there is a label for that for dominance as well. We'll call it dom frenzy. Why not? Dom frenzy as well, where, where they're just like, oh my God, somebody's going to let me be in charge. And that's so exciting for them that they make dumb moves too. And this is not gender specific. Sure. Right? You know, it's across 
across the board, obviously a lot of us women feel less safe than men do, I'm sure, but, you know, and have been our whole lives, but, oh my gosh, that was just, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I was yeah. so scared for that person. I had built so many stories around that subreddit post that I just wanted to, wanted to protect them. Yeah. And, you know. I don't know. A lot of times I, what I, I see a lot of these stories and I'm, I sit there and thinking, oh no, I feel bad. You're sa- wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you just a troll? Is anybody that dumb or that uninformed is really a better term. Uninformed, which is but, why I was so upset that I couldn't list resources in the group. Now, most of those resources were us and the podcast and the books and the events yeah. and the things we teach and stuff like that. But I consider us a good resource. I would I'm think a little so. biased. <laughs> you are. More than a little bit. More than a little bit. So anyway. All right. So we were talking, Dawn, about we happened to mention that we the rules for the event that we are going to in January mm-hmm. and you can't t- swap your tickets. But what about rules for events like in Chicago or Kansas City or Arizona or Minnesota, also places that you and I will be? Also. So, and I will have a newsletter out soon. So keep up with all our events, book news, discounts, and more via the Erotic Awakening newsletter. 11 years of podcasting. Worst segue ever. 15 years. Wow. No, we had one <laughs> four years ago. That was even worse than this. Oh, in the last wow. Years okay. Ago. Good memory. Don't forget, when you sign up for the newsletter, you get your awesome EA shout out. Like Sherry K in Oregon. Head over to eroticawakening.com and subscribe today. Awesome. Awesome. So I've been posting a little bit on Instagram again. I know I post some media mm-hmm. dots on there. And I'm going to do this while you talk. I'm going to get out the old phone and I'm going to look up Discord because you asked me earlier Discord? about something. Oh, did I? Oh, yes. okay, cool. So, but with Instagram, I thought you were going to like video us on Instagram. I actually did a little like 10 second video yesterday while we were at the art festival. That was well worth and it. That was a really good reason Instagram. for that too. That was really, really good. And we're also on TikTok. So I'm trying to remember to post a little shorts and not just pictures. Cause I post a lot of pictures on our Instagram and our, our TikTok and our tweet. I think we still have X. I'm not sure. Anyway, I post a lot of stuff about what we're doing and some pictures and some memes and all that type of stuff. But uh, Discord, what are you looking at? Did you find it? Well, no, I didn't find it. So you. Oh, that one. one. Yes. What the hell is that? Well, it looks like it's a, so what it is, what we're looking at. So this is from our Not Safe for Work Discord subgroup on Discord. I don't know. Chap, I don't know what it's called, but. It is a our not safe yeah our not safe for work channel which our patrons get access to yeah so the it, girl here it looks like she's sucking a cock it's a Pick it's an it. earth mask no it's not a it's a it's a face mask right like you wear oh. for COVID Ooh. but within the face mask if they've put well, that again um, now that a, I know what it a is little cock gag I had no clue I thought it was a black napkin. <laughs> With and they a piece just of a up penis. Some penis or something? Yeah. So and I couldn't figure out what it was. And people were laughing at it and I'm not getting it. Fair. <laughs> so anyway, so our Discord channel, we actually have really good conversation on there. Mm-hmm. Um, we were I was having a, a good time with the question of the day that I gave them of the couple that we had lunch with. They're like, So what do you do when you're not doing kink and poly? And I'm like, Nah, that's my whole life. That's everything I do. Yeah. So writing, reading teaching, presenting, yeah. podcasting. I know I had to think about it, but then I'm like, well, what does everybody else do? And people were, were getting on there. So what were you thinking of that we do that's not kink or poly related? Although we do a erotic hypnosis, we also do therapeutic hypnosis. Yes. And, and we do recreational hypnosis. And we're getting uh, deeper into that. And that's a lot of fun. We're actually getting ready to start going to some like vanilla hypnosis cons. Mm-hmm. But they're teaching classes that match my spiritual path. And then on some of the Facebook groups that I'm on, people are starting to ask like energy questions. And I'm like, oh, I fit in here. I can mm. teach this. We're going to be presenting at HypnoCons. Uh, hypno I can doubt. see it now. So <laughs> anyway, so just uh, mentioning about our social media, we do have social media out there if anybody is interested. 
And then I wanted to throw out there about the Kickstarter cards. Okay. And that we've been doing this for 15 years. And even though we talk about what we do on the podcast, like when the new book comes out, Lead, Follow, Love, when that came out, you know, we had Kevin and Katie on and we talked about it. And when Polyamory Toolkit came out, we talked about it. When the things that we present are produced, like Beyond the Love and Power Exchange Summit, you know, we'll talk about it. But we don't like advertise our stuff every time we have a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, when is the last time we talked about the Kickstarter cards? And we've got a lot of new listeners. So I wanted to mention the Kickstarter okay. cards because I carry them around with me in the truck and I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kickstarter cards really are a great negotiation tool. And that's what the intent of them for. Mm -hmm. So that when you have these conversations, regardless of the fact you have Dom Frenzy, some Frenzy, whatever, you can have very clear negotiated scenes that don't feel as if you're doing it in a sterile environment, that like you're fun and interactive. It's a nice tool, especially for us introverts. It mm -hmm. gives us something to talk about and it's something in our hands. And, and so it's like a deck of playing cards mm -hmm. that has scenes and accessories. And oh, I forget, I always forget that other word. So scenes, scenes accessories. accessories. What's the other color? You and just stolen it from my brain too, somehow. Shit, I sure did. I went, and it's gone. Implements. Implements, thank you. For oh my sticks. gosh. <laughs> so we've only been having these, we've had these cards for what, 10 years now? Yeah. So yeah, so there's one color that's scenes, one color that's accessories, one color that's implements, and a color that sets the tone of the scenes. And we absolutely love this deck of cards. We're very biased with this one as well. Sure, sure. But I keep mine in my toy bag so that if... I start stumbling when I'm trying to negotiate because I'm trying to come up with something because the question is always, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I like handing them the deck of cards with all the stuff in it that I want to do or would be up for doing. And they can choose from that, right? Or they can take out everything they're not interested in. And then we have a consensual deck. Or I've had a really naughty scene with my all my clothes on in the social space of an event sitting across from someone and going through each card and just talking about what's hot about it or what they don't like about it or, you know, what I mm -hmm. like about it or don't like about it. And you can really get to know someone that way. Yeah, so. absolutely. Head over to eroticawakening.com, go under the books and cards. You'll find the Kingstarter card, see if it's something that you might find useful to have in your toy bag. And I will mail them out to you personally if you decide to, to purchase a deck. We'll also have them with us. Which means, according to... Uh, Big Bang Theory, you'll be able to clone Dawn because her DNA will be all over those cards. That is true. That according, is true. According How, to Big Bang Theory. Anyway. You don't even watch Big Bang Theory. How did you remember that? Because I love Leonard Nimoy. Uh -huh. And he was, he and was, that is was, exactly was what that was about. One of those things. Exactly. So, Dawn, next week we are going to be talking about most unusual kinks. I'm going to save that topic for next week, except for we're going to start off with, we're going to share this one to give people a flavor of what those most unusual kinks are. Okay. So, for example, this was uh, a list. Somebody said, what are your most unusual kinks? Mm -hmm. And people were really being vulnerable and sharing some things that, you know, we sit here and we'll go, yep. You know, if you think about what a normal, you know, what a kink is now, how do we define what's an unusual one? Well, here's an example. And we'll be talking about these next weeks. I, I looked at this list. This is a little odd. My submissive playing the tuba for me in whatever I choose for him to wear and then restraining him and topping him. And the person actually had to, to do a little caveat. No, this is not a joke. This is truly what I am into. I want my submissive to play the tuba after I choose what he wears. And then as he's restrained and then I get to top him. That's pretty weird. That is unusual. That is very unusual. Yeah. I like the word unusual better. So that is unusual as in, I have never heard that before in 24 years. And it's yes. very specific. Yeah. I wonder if they were in like the marching band and did band camp and have a thing for somebody in the tuba. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it sounds kind of hot. If you put that kind of story with it, it's like, Ooh, something turned them on in the past that this turned into a fetish and nice. I think it's even more fun <laughs> if they don't know why that's a fetish for them. And yeah. it just happened some situation <laughs> that they come across where there's a tuba player and they're like, oh my God, this is it. <laughs> this is my thing. More unusual kinks next episode. Like mine? Do you have one on the list? No. 
It's tentacles. It's not unusual. And no, it's not. Knows about it. As a matter of fact, I just got a gift in the mail. I got to write her tonight and let her know that I got it. Um, we we don't have much room for things in this RV, but I got to figure out how to make this work. There's always room for tentacles. <laughs> so someone sent me a 3D printed octopus. Uh huh. So that's and it's purple and sparkly and, and, and it's super really cute. Cool. It is really super and cool. Cute, so, yes. and then I do have a few more pictures. I can't let these go too long or the list gets too long but pirate on instagram sent me a uh, tinkerbell mm -hmm. and sexy tentacles <laughs> and we did dinner with some podcast listeners and he gave me some tentacle comic books very much appreciate that mm -hmm. thanks for meeting us and having dinner with us here <laughs> in the chicago land area absolutely and then of course Trevert always comes up with some fascinating stuff and he gave me the link to where he finds his fascinating stuff. Oh. I have not actually looked at it. It kind of looks like an old shoot. I'm not sure what we used to call them. It was like around bulletin board time. BBS? Yeah, kind of. Usenet? Kind of like that. Okay. Kind of like Usenet, yeah. And I, I'm too chicken to get too far down that rabbit hole. So, but I will go take a peek at it. But that was for me, by the way. That was, was food on boobs, specifically sushi. Yes. And Really fun. Every like the sushi buffet. I forget what it's actually called, but always there's a couple people when that picture gets posted, people say, "Yeah, I've either participated or been the buffet table for that." Mm -hmm. I've participated in it. Mm -hmm. So um, up at Smart, they did that, and I got to suck a strawberry off a nipple. We did that at Great Lakes, except for instead of sushi, it was breakfast sandwiches. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Did that, too. Bacon and eggs and, and all the good stuff. Thank you, Trevere, for that. And then let's see who sent this. Enigma. So Enigma sent this one, and it was so cute because not the picture, but what Enigma said. Enigma said, oh, my God, I'm two years behind on the podcast, and I'm starting to hear my name. This is so cool. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh, we mention your name almost every week because <laughs> you're always sending pictures. This one was, it, it's a, it's a painting mm -hmm. and it is a bunch of people wrapped up in a plant that's molesting them. And it kind of looks like tentacles, but it's a plant. Mm -hmm. And the people that are all wrapped up in these tentacles have the word ant written on them. Mm -hmm. So I think they're supposed to be ants in a plant, but they're people. See and, what I mean? Yeah. See how it's got ants? But look, it's guys and gals and everybody in there is being molested and poked and, and prodded. It and is main, mainly guys on this one. I don't actually see any femmes. So I thought I saw here. No, but that could be a guy. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. So lots of guys. Lots of guys getting groped and poked. And I don't understand this one. Earworm, I guess. Huh? Oh, maybe. Maybe, maybe because she's wearing, oops, sorry, headphones. I'm poking his phone and. <laughs> yes, let's. What a great podcast. Let's sit here and stare at my phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, my anyway. gosh. Don't get started. We'll get lost down the rabbit hole again. And then was Bas there anything else? So Basanos sent it's a woman and it's like the old Japanese watercolor. Mm -hmm. And the woman is holding onto a tree and there's a lot of tentacles coming up and wrapping yep. around her and ink. It's not like watercolors, like water and ink the uh -huh. black ink sort of painting which we saw some of at the chicago art fest that we yep. were at so that was really amazing absolutely and i took pictures of tentacles coming out of mouths in one of the booths so you did uh, lots of tentacles <laughs> uh, speaking of chicago we are only here for one more month and when I say Chicago, obviously, I mean anywhere within a three-hour drive. If you are a uh, listener and would like to have a uh, cup of coffee with us somewhere or other beverage of your choice, feel <laughs> free to reach out to us. Awesome. Be a part of the Erotic Awakening Podcast community. You can support us on Patreon and get early access to the podcast, a free version of the audiobook Polyamory Toolkit, free ebooks, discounts on the monthly Zoom classes, member only discord channel and much much more find all the goodies at patreon.com slash erotic awakening today and help others find the podcast take a moment to support the podcast rate us on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen or just tell your friends join the conversation with us and other listeners use the links from the erotic awakening website for our growing discord channel and feel free to reach out to us Contact us with questions, podcast comments, or just to say hi. We are Dan and Dawn on FetLife. And Erotic Awakening on Instagram. Or just email us at Dan and Dawn at eroticawakening.com. 
Bye, Dan. Bye, Don.